You know, if you're one of those people that, I hate WWE, I think it sucks, I can't watch the product, but you liked this main event, brother, I don't know what to tell you. This was a total WWE main event. It was worked like a WWE main event. The finish was a WWE finish. That's what it was. Brian, Brian and Vinny, along with Granny and Craig and sometimes other people. Wrestling, tell me who and what's happening. Are you wearing any green? My, my one green t-shirt is dirty. How come nobody wears any green on St. Paddy's Day anymore? What happened? I did drink Guinness. You two nerds pinch each other. Pinch yourself or I'm going to come over there. Craig just pinched his nipple because he's disgusting. Orange has really toned down the shtick a lot lately. He had just someone put his hands in his pants. I, I mean, his that shtick, was not dick. John, not John, excuse that me. That was more than shtick. Is that how that, that was, works? That was shtick is what that was. Shtick. Thank you. Why you would announce 24 hours in advance that you're going to put Brian Danielson in the ring with Shibata in Shibata's first match in AEW since November is beyond all comprehension. My comment upon seeing this announcement, if AEW announced Brian Danielson versus Misawa with 24 hours notice, it would not seem that strange. Once two men who should not be kicked in the head started kicking each yeah. other really hard in the head, that's when the people were like, holy shit, we're seeing something here. Yeah. Could be the end of a career, but goddamn, we're seeing we're it. seeing something. Last Wednesday, Darby Allen broke his foot. And he will not be climbing Mount Everest. No. After all that. But uh, he has vowed to climb next year. And then. Oh, no. Oh, God almighty. Oh. House of Black versus Infantry. I don't have the vocabulary to tell you how much I hated all this. <laughs> oh, it sucked. This was terrible, terrible, terrible. Not so much watching the match. The match was long and boring and often sloppy. But the way this is all put together. This was a textbook example of how to lose to another team and not get them over in any way possible. I was like, God, maybe we could pick one week of the Young and the Restless and just watch Monday through Friday. And at every Tuesday, we would do one of those days. That's tempting. I have something no, for you. I have something for today. People are very excited by this idea on the chat. You can't watch one week of The Young and the Restless. Let me spell it out for you. No. Wow. So much about Rock this week. So I decided a good match for Rock would be uh, Cold Stone. Strap him on. Corner post must have done damage. And Stone Cold kicked the Rock out of the ring. Shane, Shane was rooting for Rock. A closed line while down. Rock put his arm out across Stone Cold. It was just a massive infusion. Stone Cold won the match. Cool. Can you verify we did not use AI to replace Granny? <laughs> yeah. I like Dynamite a lot, but I remember watching Rampage, and as I was watching that show, I thought, man... Three hours is just too long. I don't care how good it is. Dynamite was actually almost a straight line. The Edge and Christian number kept them uh, from collapsing in the final quarter, which they normally do. The Adam Copeland Christian match actually was the first eight minutes of Rampage. And man, the second that match ended, 250,000 people were like, I'm out of here. And within a half hour, 330,000 people wow. had just decided, oh, we ain't watching any more wrestling. It's just too much. Tony Schiavone calls out Mercedes Monet. Do we have any of these really wild Mercedes fans listening right now? I sure hope not. Mercedes doing this promo, to me, came off as someone who was playing a big Hollywood star. Mm. She does this promo... And she smiles the entire time, and she grabs her heart the entire time, and she's just so thankful for everything, and she just clutches at her breast. And she's, and I'm just like, what's going on here? I mean, as she is, she needs to be a heel. I've said this for a decade now. She is so much better as a, as a heel than as a babyface. Okada, of course, one of the all-time legends of uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling and just Japanese Pro Wrestling in general. Is it possible that he is even better at American-style Pro Wrestling than he was in Japanese Wrestling? He would have walked into WWE, and he would have had fantastic matches with everybody right out the gate. He doesn't hit people all that hard. He doesn't do crazy shit. He's just 
an amazing professional wrestler. Okada wins, new Continental Champion, as we all expected. I thought Jericho did an exceptional job. And not only did he put the guy over clean, but he endorsed him afterwards. He did everything in his power to get over Hook. What he said a lot was, okay, suplex me onto my head. Okay, suplex me onto my head again. He was suplexed on his head repeatedly. I think he was trying to fall on his head on some of these. Aside from uh, Dwayne Johnson, I don't know anyone whose promos I am enjoying more right now than Will Ospreay. He's awesome. Because he's having the time of his fucking life. That's what that helps. And, and aside from swearing, he can do anything he wants. Yes. Fucking Tony Storm rears back, and she goes, BAM! And she fucking punched Thunder Rosa. Fucking square in the face. So hard. If you told me, as 10-year-olds, Adam and Jay scripted a match about what they would like to do if they had a chance to main event a show in Toronto, and then use it here in this match, I might believe you. It was very much the match two 10-year-olds would love to do in their hometown. We did a survey and uh, asked people what they like, don't like, and I know you'll be shocked to hear this, but there was a lot of tribalism. It's going to be harder and harder to stick to your tribalism every mercedes Monet promo is going to be a total WWE promo. She's got a writer from WWE that is working on her stuff. And then you've got this edge. It's all WWE. And so I don't mind seeing good WWE-style stuff in AEW. But, you know, if you're one of those people that, I hate WWE, I think it sucks, I can't watch the product, but you liked this main event, brother, I don't know what to tell you. This was a total... WWE main event. It was worked like a WWE main event. The finish was a WWE finish. And there's going to be a lot more of this going forward. And it's going to become much more homogenized. Yeah, this is one of the things I love about AEW. When they promote a match with a stip, you will get what was advertised. This was a fucking street fight. And blood, tax, whatever you think about it. I mean, you may not like it, but that's what they promised. And that's what they gave you. I'm going to say this again slowly, because if you didn't watch the show, you're not going to believe what I tell you. Lyra Valkyria came out with her arm in a sling. And she's squaring off with Roxanne Perez. And Lyra, with her arm in a sling, with her arm in a sling, wins the fight! I cannot believe my eyes. This show is so dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb television. Josh Briggs called Diajack. A wannabe Shaft. Yes. And I immediately thought, you have never seen a Shaft movie. Like the Samuel L. Jackson character. And Briggs goes, well, yeah. And that's when he goes, I don't know if you notice or not, but I'm white. And uh, Josh Briggs cracked. Sean Spears is dressed like the Godfather for some reason. Joe Gacy then pops out from behind a box. I hope Sean enjoyed being a cool thing for three weeks. Because nobody comes out of a feud with Joe Gacy looking better than they did going in. Nathan Frazier and Axiom versus Charlie Dempsey and Miles Bourne. This was great. To me, the two best teams in all of WWE right now, at least in terms of having really fucking exciting matches, are Axiom and Nathan Frazier and Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. They might be, actually, yes. And they're both in fucking developmental. Yeah. Hooded figure appears on stage and is about to reveal himself. I was like, holy shit, Mello's all jacked. <laughs> Golly, look at that guy. It's Dijek. Uh, Hooded figure appears is about to unmask, but then it turns out one of the security guys unmasks, and that's Mello, dressed up as his own security guard. He jumps trick from behind. All the other security joins in, and they leave him lying. What a callback that was, Vinny, to see a man pretending to be Carmelo Hayes, and you concluding it must be Dijak. Yes, who is neither Shaft nor Carmelo Hayes. And is white. Best of 16 weeks. Yeah. It's a good angle to end the show. Very focused, heading Some to the... Uh, great wrestling on the show. The pay-per-view. 